everybody and welcome back to the True Gamer Podcast, a podcast hosted by two gamers for you, the True Gamers. I'm one of your hosts, Eddie, along with my bro, the inverted gamer himself, Sheps. How are you doing, bro? Uh, do, uh, do you know what? I'm doing excellent today because I just remembered for the first time in literally two years to remind you to like the video <laughs> at the beginning because it helps you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. In less than 20 seconds. Because we have put literally thousands of, co- of hours of content out. <laughs> literally. <laughs> And never once remembered. Yeah. Right at the end, we'll remember. Oh, always at the end. At the end of a three-hour podcast, yeah. (laughs) We'll remember it there. So Um, if you guys make it that far. (laughs) Really, really appreciate it if if you would do it. Because, and you know the reasons why I don't have to pretend, oh, it helps us out. It's good for the channel. Yeah. I appreciate you. Much love. How about you? How you doing? Bro, I'm so proud of myself. I'm going to pat myself on the back. He he did it this time, guys. He's had just enough sleep where he can remember to tell you to like. That's what's happening. (laughs) Um, I'm doing great. Today, I feel energized. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Maybe I've got a good night's sleep. Woke up on the right side of the bed. This is. uh, I'm not going to say anything about that. I was going to take you down a dark road, but whatever. I I feel good today. And I feel like we've got some good topics to talk about. A lot of really cool things that I think could be awesome in the future cool, cool, after cool. this we've got our horizon forbidden west spoiler cast to record yeah, yeah. we've also got conversations podcast to record today it's gonna be a busy day. and Patreon the ads we've got to finish up the ad which we nailed every single take but just forgot to do all of the takes yeah last week we were supposed to put a new one in there and uh we forgot one Sheet. one shot um but that <laughs> should happen today so yeah this uh, video is sponsored yeah. by manscape as well and you'll hear more That's about right. those guys in a bit i have more interesting news though okay i am moving house so, gasp! I was gonna say you. I, I was mean, like, should I? I was thinking, should my I act surprised? <laughs> like I know, I know all about it. In fact, you consulted with me if you should, if it was a good idea. <laughs> my clothes. Could you imagine that? Like, dun dun dun! Yeah. What? Well, we should do that. And then as the <laughs> thumbnail, like he told me this emotional. Eddie told me the big secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, mo- I'm moving house. Um, yeah. I it's not like a a massive like I've made YouTube millions and I'm moving house. Right, yeah, right. It's more like my parents are moving house, and instead of them uh, renting that out to somebody, I'm just going to move there because it is an upgrade and right. like You're- Isla's going to get a bigger room and stuff exactly. like that. So I, I'm looking it's forward to it. It's working out really well because uh, weirdly, you will have your old room back. Yes, yes. Which is very strange. The room that I grew up in will be there. Isla will be living in that room. That's the room she'll be living in. Weird, isn't it? I'm I'm not going to lie. For a moment, and I'm sure everybody's thinking the same thing, but they're just not I'm saying thinking, it out loud. I'm thinking it. The memories in the in that room. I'm thinking it, yeah. But I am gutting it. So hopefully yes, the memories come with it. It won't be that room. <laughs> no. It will not be that room. The um, walls are getting redone. Yeah. The carpet's gone. The floors are being changed. Everything. Everything's getting redone. So hopefully the memories come with yeah. it. And uh, and yeah, we've got a, a bigger, a much bigger studio room that we're going to have right now. Yeah, so like if, if you're new around here, the office, yeah. the studio is your spare bedroom with spare room i guess bedroom whatever it's a spare room it's yeah, another it's a, room it's a room, it's a room in the house for anything else, yeah. and ultimately <clears throat> it is also like it pulls double duty as like your man cave a place to put stuff if you're if you're doing things like it, it's a room you need it right yeah and <clears throat> in the new house we basically have there's an attic conversion right yeah loft conversion so it's an entire floor essentially dedicated to just content creation content creation Gonna put my stream set up there. We're gonna have our recording studio. It's gonna be also, nicely lit. It's gonna be background the, cool. It's great. The fact that we won't have to set up oh. every day and then de set up. Yeah, because that's literally what we do. We like have to put the seats in place, set up all the cameras and stuff like that. I mean, the, the mic's pl- literally ha- halfway. Whoops! <laughs> in the in the room, like it's at the lights. Like you trying to leave here and keep the setup intact when we go for lunch is is really hard. Yeah, we're like trying to squeeze, Let me just squeeze through this and gap. I'm not a monstrously sized guy, and mm. I have a hard time getting through this stuff. It's, so yeah, it's it'll, be, it'll be really cool. That'll be the best thing, and permanent just having things screen. in permanent spots. Yes, exactly, yeah. a permanent spot for that as well. And then also, I think of a, a nice, better place to put up all my like collectibles and things like that. Yeah, we got a really pretty nice. cool setup back here. Also, oh shit, there'll be space for like you know you just got a PS One. I've got all my old consoles. I've got an N64, PS One, Two, Three, Four. Well, like we could because I saved my consoles. I, I'm just too. The reason why I got the PS1 yeah. was because I actually looked, I was going through the attic to empty stuff out. By the way, there'll be videos going uh, like on Twitter and stuff yeah. like that of the, the progress and things so you guys can see what the house looks like. Um, the reason why I got the PS1 was because I was going through the attic and I found my old PS2 
I found my old PS3 yeah. and, a, and a slim version and a fat version. And oh, I was like, sick. well, I've got my PS4 Pro here. I've got a PS5. Let me get my, let me buy a PS1 so it can complete the yeah, set. Yeah. And then I'll put that on display I'll and stuff like that. I'll bring my N64 out. Oh! I've got all my old game stores. GoldenEye, that, we're never playing them, by the no, way. No, 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 no. We, we made that mistake. We don't want to ruin before. the memory again. <laughs> uh, but well, we can put it in the setup. Yeah. For the office. Like, it's cool. I don't know, man. It's cool stuff to have. And I don't have the space at my flat anyway. Uh, once we hear big on YouTube, we hit a million subs and a million dollars well, a month on Patreon. That we're talking about. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. You take the left, the east wing and <coughs> I'll take the west wing. Yes, yes. There we go. Yes. Um, I gave you the east because you, know, you need to pray in which direction. Yes, but, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but like... Because By the I way, I am Muslim, so that take was was whatever well, you know. That's the thing we're talking don't about. Ever, don't, just don't explain it. It's even funnier if you don't explain. <laughs> um, I don't have the space for it, so I have the stuff, and it's just like in a box somewhere because I just don't have anywhere to display it. And I would rather it be on display, and I can come in and go, "Oh yeah, my Mario Kart." Yeah. yeah. Oh mate, maybe we do do Rainbow Road. I will tell you, one of my two controllers. <laughs> has the uh, the thumb thing broke off and it, there's a metal spike there. And, oh, God. And that's how I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> so you see this scar I have on my thumb? That's from continuous hours of uh, doing right. that. Also, people might think that I was looking at the wrong thumb. No, that's the thumb you had to use for, uh, <laughs> for the N64. Anyway, tell you besides the point. Yeah, so we're moving to a new house. Uh, I'll update you guys with like little videos and stuff like that on Twitter. Follow me there and you can yeah. see that sort of stuff there. Um, it's really good. Uh, but one main, the main reason why it was sort of like pushed me over the edge was because Isla's room right now, <clears throat> it's all good for her. She's a small baby. Tiny, She's great. Yeah. But anytime we're going to change it to go into like a bed, that room is going to get filled up by whatever bed we buy. Yeah. We needed somewhere bigger for her. And uh, she's getting she's getting that massive no. room now. Hear me out. Yeah. Because this is going to segue into a topic, <clears throat> I presume. But there is a series, a documentary series, uh, about a boy who was raised under stairs. Ah. And I feel like Isla, he turns out to be a hero. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And like almost the savior of the world, some mm. might say. And I feel like... Is he very likable? Depends. Right. If right. you like cunts. Ah, uh, mm, 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 right? Mm, mm, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but like, I feel like Isla, it would be a character building exercise. So don't mm. worry about the room. The room's a mistake under the under the cupboard. And then instead of like needing more space as she gets longer, right? You know, she's like a baby and she grow. Yeah, yeah. She'll just have to sit up the wall. Exactly. Yeah, you know, right? that's so, a good point. So the leg room won't matter because it will push her up the, the wall. There you go. She'll there be you fit go. in. That's, you know, a under the stairs and that will teach her how good she has it when she finally goes out to the world by herself right. and at the age of 35 exactly and think about it like this a lot of like not millennials what's under us gen z's gen z they're yeah. all like oh they're all staying at home longer she won't want to stay at home <clears throat> she'll hit 35 and leave and then she'll be like i hated that place so much i'll never go back amazing mm -hmm. but like i learned some really valuable lessons like dating's evil Yes. No boys ever. Yeah. Right. Um, really, she'll really appreciate just a really cheap bed or even a futon on the ground. She'll be like, "Amazing! I can lie my whole body. That'd be incredible." This is only a plus to me. All of this is just sounding great. It's good per parenting advice, I think. <coughs> uh, guys, let me know. Is that you think that's a good idea? Under yeah. the stairs, probably the best yeah. idea, right? I think it's. I'll a install good idea. her a light. Don't worry. <clears throat> Put it on a timer. So she doesn't use up too much. Oh yeah, yeah. Too yeah. much electricity. And yeah, well, she don't want to spoil her. Spare the rods spoil the child you know that's it that's it talking of, of spoiled pressure children makes diamonds that are unloved saying. yes are super bros yes i on patreon.com slash conversations oh my god talking of children that are unloved <laughs> wow <laughs> Us, whoo, whoo. Yeah. Our super bros over on patreon.com Forward slash, no head dad there. <laughs> Conversations that make this all happen. Um, who do we have to thank? Unloved. I mean, can you can you blame them? I mean, right? who would fucking love these guys? I side with the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Diogo Dildo, Isak the Ultimate Cub Sox, Sabine from Smallville, the Star Wars Encyclopedia, Adam Sunley, Jeremy Renner, that's right, an official Avenger, uh, Super Sus Ben Fryer, the Filthy FIFA Fanatic, Joe McCormack, my juicy left nut, the Super Sexy Producer, Sean, the Gamer from Gaming Shire, Dave Binnis, and Kevin, the number one simp.
Do you know what I said there? The spicy meatball. Spicy yeah. meatball, exactly. All you audio guys, you're never going to get that. You're never going to get that. Head over to YouTube as well and check out of That's Xbox. Right. Thank you guys so much for keeping the lights and mics on and everything going here at Conversations, the gaming and everything. <clears throat> Bro, <laughs> yes. Let's dive right into this podcast with our first topic, as we usually do. I mean, I assumed I laid it up for the Harry. There's some, I don't want to talk too much about it, but I feel like we should address it. Do you, do you want to talk? Uh, I was going to say, I usually make the first topic what's going to be in the headline. And I feel like this will be the headline. I think that because mm. I brought it up, and Let's do we it. can do this in, in literally one sentence. Go ahead. Which is, our advice has always been... Oh, let's, let's talk about what it is first of all. Should we, no, we not at is? all. We do the advice, they'll have to figure out what... Figure here's out the what answer, you got to figure out what the question is. <laughs> there is a... Okay, yeah, you're all right. Let's say up. There's a lot of controversy. No, you say up. Okay, so Hogwarts Legacy was finally revealed. The gameplay of it was revealed at yeah. a state of play the exact day that we record our podcast Mother last week. Typical. Typical. Uh, we moved the recording day because of <laughs> stuff like this, and they just followed us. I will say we have been quite lucky recently, but this one just didn't work out. So and also you, know, you win some, you lose some. Prior to the recent stuff, one of the most awaited games. Right, exactly. One of potentially the biggest games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was shown off. Uh, got to see a very in-depth look at the, the world and some yeah. of the mechanics and what you can do in the world. They showed off a lot of combat, including, like, how to use your wand and fighting with yeah, magic yeah, and yeah. all that cool stuff like that. The highlights, I would say, is that you don't play as Harry Potter or any of his loser friends. I actually agree with you, and I'm not yeah. joking. Yeah, I, Exactly. Uh, you don't... <laughs> I mean, think about it. Think about it. It's a ginger, an orphan, and a girl. A girl. And we know girls don't sell. We right? know that. Ubisoft taught us that. Yeah, and like we're certainly not doing a, like a many hour long spoiler cast about a girl led thing. Ubisoft did teach us that. Um, a, a gin- I mean, who needs? You don't need to go. So I actually fucking love Ron. <laughs> uh, and then you got Harry Potter. What a loser. Four eyed virgin. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Anyway, but I do think that is a good thing because it will never be right. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's any of the other characters as well. There's some like uh, ghosts that were shown that was uh, same as the one, like nearly headless Nick and stuff like that. In is the, it Harry Potter fan? This is the dumb thing. So this is the thing that happened. I watched the state of play and everyone was there. I had my girlfriend with me was watching it. And these guys are saying, uh, I'm saying, oh, that's so-and-so from this thing. Oh my God, that's that, that fucking idiot. Oh, the howler is a is a letter that you get when you're in trouble yeah, from your mom and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And they're like, he's a Harry Potter fan. I'm like, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I watched them. That's how I know they suck. That's how I know it all sucks. I mean, we watched Lord of the Rings. Exactly. You, you know? got to watch it to know you suck. No, what it is, I, I, I like the world. I just hate the, the fucking protagonists. And the, the, the world's cool. Losers. The world is cool. World of Wizardry yeah. is cool. And that's what this game is about, essentially. Pretty um, much. I know it, it looks, looks cool. really good. Like, to be clear, graphically, <laughs> visually, it's Hogwarts looks right. Yeah. It, it, look, it looks good. Especially graphically, because I, uh, I when I watched the, the actual state of play, I wasn't sold on it, but I watched some 4K video yeah, afterwards, yeah. and I was like, okay, this looks a yeah. lot better. Um, it could be interesting. It could yeah. be interesting. At the moment, I'm not 100% sold on yeah. it. I'm more in the boat of like, is it gonna? Have you put all of this stuff in here to fill a world, or are they actually meaningful? Like the houses, for example. Yes. I don't know what the difference is if you pick Hufflepuff or if you pick Gryffindor, I hope Slytherin, it's or Riven. By the way, I hope so yeah. too. But they ha they didn't mention anything of that. Yeah. And they they barely mentioned anything about the story. They were like, oh, there's a a goblin evil guy. Yeah. I'm like, uh. Cool. On the level of on the level of Voldemort, Goblin is down here yeah, somewhere. Right, right. So I, I wasn't. They didn't sell me on that. Ironically, as well, this is the sort of game that I think would lend itself to being open world in the sense of like, give it the boundary of Hogwarts. What's the gaff that's nearby Hogwarts where they go to get the place? Are you diagonally? To that? That's where you buy stuff. <laughs> uh, diagonally. I no, he said diagonally. I, I specifically called it diagonally because yeah. of the joke. <laughs> what is that town called? Oh, I used to know this stuff. I used to be really into it. Hogsmeade? Y yeah. Yeah. Look at you, Potterhead. I'm telling you, this is the thing. People are like, oh, he's a Harry Potter fan. I'm like, no, I'm not. Yeah. I just watched it. Like, I know what it if is. You, if you restrict the world to like the Forbidden Forest, Hogwarts, and Hogsmeade, which, mm. by the way, is pretty significant. And again, I've said this before, like with magic present, you can do like an ashtray maze type thing. You can find ways to make a small area like pretty big. Mm. You can go underground, <clears throat> you can go up, you can go underwater, you can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Um, 
and then make it so that yeah you get missions but depending like if you wanted to if you have stuff that you can access at night but you want to go somewhere else well then you have to like use stealth because there'll be teachers there like yeah. this would be a really good way to do open world within a set confines of not a world but like a a school basically yeah um so i don't know but we'll see and they did do something they showed something like that on the trailer at least they um because <clears throat> he was like he was going through the halls the character that he was playing as anyway was going through the halls and you was like pulling certain stair staircases to yeah, you yeah, yeah. indicating this is like a puzzle like a maze like you said like that's trey maze right, it changes so i think there's a lot of potential there. i think so far it looks okay it does look cool i just need to know more about the story because yeah. as beautiful as the world might be as well as as cool and full as the world might be they need to be meaningful and the story needs to bang. It needs to be interesting. Yes. <clears throat> you can't just bank on the fact that you have magic and yeah. like a moving castle is there. Yeah. That's all cool, but it will get tired after a little while. Exactly. Now, there is controversy. There is, yes. This uh, this game is from a create the creator, obviously, the, the whole, whole... Let me start again. Harry Potter yeah. was made by J.K. Rowling. Yes. And J.K. Rowling has come under fire recently about her comments online regarding trans people and stuff like that. Yeah, she made some spicy comments. Exactly. Yeah. And it got her in a lot of heat, but she's a billionaire, so it doesn't really affect her, right? This is the dumb side I of life. I actually did say this on the Discord, which if you knew, we have the best Discord on the internet. Not even joking. Check it out. But I did say every single billionaire is so separated from like regular people and the people, like the regular people they ever come in contact with them are all fawning over them that they never realize, ever, any of them, that they have a bad opinion. Right? Yes. Or, or like, I never get correction. And I'm not saying one way or the other, because it's not my place to tell anyone their beliefs. Yeah. But our position on, because a lot of people are saying, oh, I was really excited for this game, but I don't want to support JK Rowling. Yeah. Two things to consider. One, what you buy is a vote. So if you if you don't like what she said don't buy the game yeah right if you if it really bugs you that much pick it up secondhand in a week because somebody will get it and not like it or, or whatever you'll be able to pick it up soon on the other hand and this is sort of a defense for why you could buy the game and, and not be like voting for her opinion unlike a company she is an independent billionaire your lack of a purchase won't make any impact on her she doesn't have any employees yes. like she is an independent billionaire so she's not going to notice it and in this particular sense i don't feel like you're gonna sort of damage jk rowling any you know so the movies are still getting watched still getting royalties books are still selling and all you will what you will do is limit how early you are to the table to experience the game if it bugs you pick up second hand mm. nothing wrong with it you'll be a week behind if you really want to play it, that's a like I'm not trying to justify J.K. Rowling, but you can, you can pick it up and and not feel like you're supporting her. I wouldn't say that for Ubisoft because they're a product-driven business, yeah. but she's an independent <clears throat> billionaire. You'll never make a dent there, exactly. but you will make a dent on Ubisoft on any company's bottom line. So that's it's up to you, man. Just that's, see if you enjoy the game. That's all I care about. That's kind of my stance on it, and I I go a little bit further that. I don't, I don't, as I said, everyone can make their own decision. Don't let me like dictate anything that you guys want to do. But I feel like if you are to boycott this game, it's not going to affect JK Rowling because right. she's uh, uh, probably already made this deal and she's got a fat paycheck out of it for the rights to even use Hogwarts in yeah. the title yeah, yeah. and everything <clears throat> else like that. <clears throat> and maybe she gets residuals from that and that's maybe something you can limit. But she's already got made so much money. She's yeah. already a billionaire. Oh, she won't notice it. If this game flops, didn't sell a single copy, she won't even notice it. She won't even notice yeah. it. The only people that you will damage at the end of the day are the insanely talented developers over there at wb that are going to be that are going to be uh, making this game and they've poured their heart and soul into yeah. this and you can tell they've poured their heart and soul into it from the state of play where they were talking they were all so passionate yeah. they were all so happy and what's worse is that this didn't happen this didn't happen in the opposite way around it wasn't jk rowling said her words and then this game got made this game yes. started <laughs> halfway through and then jk rowling came out and said stuff yeah. so they are literally innocent people in the crossfire. Yeah. And I feel like that's shitty. Yes. That's the worst so, part of it. Which is why we're trying to say it's up to you. Yeah. And there really is not a bad way to handle this. Yeah. It's up to you how much it bothers you. Um, but in reality, 
all that J.K. Rowling really did was take a shit on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> because she'll be unaffected. And if you don't buy the game, then really passionate devs and a company that made a, probably a very good game uh, get less profits, which hurts them, but not her. And if you do get the game, you know, you there's a bit of you there going like, oh, I feel like I supported her, but it won't even bother. So uh, for me, I think I'll, we'll probably get the game. And we'll game share it because yeah. that's how we do stuff. Yeah. And, and it'll come out of Patreon money. Because also we want to be in the discussion. Yeah. It's a bit more of like a content thing. It is totally up to you. And you can choose to vote with your money. But I do feel like in this case, it's a little bit different. This isn't like the Ubisoft stuff that came out. This is they developed a game. They're all passionate about it. And then a month or a little while before it comes out, she comes and, the and person starts literally wrote a fire the source material, yeah. not even on the project. <clears throat> so yeah. based on, because of the Ubisoft thing, yeah. uh, something came up. Um, do you know of the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the idiot, I would say, the guy called, a guy called uh, Imran Khan? Yeah, it rings a bell. He's around. He used to work for Game Informer, I believe, and uh, he got laid off from there. Yeah. And he's moved over. Now he works for Fanbyte Media, right? Now, he came out with a tweet on the day that the uh, State of Play came out. And he came out, I have decided I do not want to engage in the marketing of Hogwarts Legacy, so I won't. Instead, here's a list of trans charities and ways to help in Texas. Specifically Texas, I don't know why. Unusual. Yeah. Um, this will be as if like, like people don't get affected in other, other places, whatever. Um, this will be the way I cover this game pre-release from now on. Uh, Everyone's right entitled to their to their opinion what yeah. they're going to do with that, so I'm not going to tell him to do anything. However, it's extremely hypocritical for two reasons. One, guys like this and media like this yeah. are totally fine giving publicity, <laughs> press, praise for all kinds of companies oh, like yeah. Ubisoft, oh, yeah. like Activision, oh, yeah. who have actually done something wrong those companies who have actually done something yeah. wrong and are now flaming a game which is being okay the game is a source came from a creator who has said some dumb stuff yeah the people however are completely innocent and yeah. you're happy to just completely dogpile on them where you stand by idly yeah. when everything else happens yeah and then the second reason, you work for Fanbyte. Fanbyte is literally owned by Tencent. People who have heavy, heavy, heavy I can't believe you went there. I'm from, so glad you did it. From Chinese, co Chinese communist parties who have concentration camps. You literally work for the devil. He did it. He did it. He said it. He said it. Boys, he said it. You can get off your fucking high horse, okay? Yeah. You specifically, Imran, can get off your fucking I high horse. I love this version of you, blood. <laughs> I've gone a little bit spicy over the years, haven't I? I've gone a little bit harder. Like it just it pissed me off so much. If he if it had been a random guy on the side, yeah, then I'd be like, yeah. okay, look, it's a bit hypocritical what you're doing, bro. You do things over here, you do that over there. It's not you're not doing yeah. one to one. You're giving preferential treatment. But then on top of that, the guys, it's like Hitler coming up to you and going, "Yo, I really don't like the way you're treating these people over here." It's like, bro, you're <laughs> gonna do you gonna excuse me? You turn a blind eye to that. This is happening yeah. in your own backyard, and you're turning a blind I'm eye so to. So glad we did this topic first. Ultimately, look. Again, it is not my place to tell anyone what they think about any issues, right? What we can say is, like, taking all of the emotion out of it, the creator said something stupid, mm. well into the development of the game. The game's... When's the release date? Uh, October 23rd, I believe. So, is no, no, sorry, no. They said, they said holiday 2020, holiday 20. but I think the release date was leaked somewhere like 3rd of December, something like cool. that. Cool. So, like, it's w deep into development. It's yeah. almost, you know, it's the finishing touches sort of area. Like, we're coming into the end of development. There was rumors, okay. apparently, that it was going to come out last year, yeah. one year after <clears throat> J.K. Rowland said her stuff. So it was almost ready, yeah. and they just decided, let's delay and push it further away from this controversy, right. and we can work more on it. Right. So it was almost done. Right. Almost done. So I don't, like, look, maybe something comes out and it turns out these guys are awful, but as of right now, as far as we can tell, the developers are innocent of any crime. And, you know, also, look, whether you agree or disagree with J.K. Rowling is not the point. The point is, is it worth hurting this game? Because you're not going to hurt her. That's yeah. the thing you've got to think about. And then also, you're going to take advice from people that, that get their paycheck from people with concentration camps. Exactly. Um, this is literally like... so. Russia right now is in a in a war with Ukraine, yes. right? If you believe Vladimir Putin's doing some really dumb shit, yeah. 
do what do you, you never do business with 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 Russia? Okay. Do you know, oh, I have a company who was interested in buying loads of things from me. However, because they're simply Russian, just because they're Russian, I'm not gonna. Like, I will say it doesn't make any sense. The people are not. Are I, not I, uh, I don't want to get too political, but I do agree. Like you, we we've seen a lot of um, people like losing jobs, who you know, high placed jobs, and and like um, athletes and stuff not being allowed to, especially Paralympians like not being allowed to compete because they're the government of their country is doing a thing and i understand like the uh olympics is a political event in a weird way yeah. but like what you did is is take people with disabilities that have worked their ass off to compete in a sport and tell them you can't do this because a government which by the way you don't get to vote for yeah like it's not like he's elected it's like we 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 believe in him <laughs> right we we that, voted for him he's so, there thank so, god th so the fallout on russians is not fair yeah in a lot of cases it's like people are targeting the wrong they have the yeah. wrong target for the flack that needs to be going out there so it, it's anyway our stance has always been vote with your money yeah we feel that this case is slightly different where the people that you would be hurting aren't the person that you're angry at yeah so it maybe isn't worth it but it's up to you it's how you feel anyway vote with your money vote with your money guys um I'm interested to see more. As I said, I want to see more from the story. Well, because you're a big pothead. I am a big... <laughs> Do you know what's funny? Because we have this thing. I, I slay Harry Potter all the time. And the guys in the community were worried about coming to the State of Play <laughs> stream that I did. Because they're like, if you shit on Harry Potter all the way through yeah. I'm going to be so angry and then they turn up and I do exactly that um, they, they need it they need that, that yeah, feeling inside them if it turns out that it's actually really good and it's like the world of wizardry but in a cool way right I think I might be into it I, yeah. might, I, might, I might like it so there's always that possibility yeah. and I'm, I'm interested to see that um, yeah so that's, uh, that's Harry Potter right there um, should we dive into our next topic yeah let's do it alright but before that exactly uh, shit how do we do this uh, this is the True Gamer Podcast coming to your eyes and ears every Saturday here at youtube.com slash conversations. Uh, you can find us also on uh, podcast services around the world. Just search for the True Gamer Podcast. Wherever you guys are, if you're over on YouTube, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell for occasional notifications on the videos. And if you're over on podcast services, rate us five stars on right. like Spotify and Apple. Um, if you love what we do here, if you want to support us a little bit more, if you want to go that step further, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash conversations where you can kick us a couple of bucks a month, get exclusive podcasts, get exclusive content, early access to this podcast at the $5 tier, and have your name read out as a true gamer, just as we are about to do. Oh, God. Now, why can't I remember You absolutely this? nailed that, by the way, yeah, up until bad. having the, the names ready. <laughs> uh, but, but that was good. It's not bad. I like right? the way you did that. That was so much. That was, I don't know, a really good flow to it. I'm getting slightly better. I'm slightly better. I still need to refine it. But here we go. But yeah, you can get your name read out like these true gamers, like Adam, uh, so Adam the high quality potato, Jeremy Horde, Sheps is crusty right now, uh, Isaac Manny, Adam Sunling, Clark fifty three, Kevin Crow, Sab two five five seven, Joe McCormack, Random Wavelength, Billy. Build up of a, a saliva there. Um, Diogo, the sex haver, aka Sacchino. Uh, hashtag make the nice guys too, please, for the love of fuck Hollywood. <laughs> Fishy, the jackal, Alex, Mikey Tilly, Alpha Aquila, Max H, Make Bindis Mod, uh, Cobra SS, Sam Mason, Albi Scori, Night King, and Jack Nicholas. Thank you guys so much for keeping the lights That's and right. Max on over there. However, guys, if you don't want to head over to Patreon, you don't want to kick us a few bucks, you feel like we're not worth it, or maybe you just don't have the money, doesn't matter. We love you all the same. We love you just being here, watching our content, talking with us in the comment section and stuff like that. We really do. And with that said, a word from our sponsor. With a new ad. <gasps> Hopefully. Hopefully. Could you imagine if we forget again? <laughs> What's wrong, Timmy? No maidens? No. And I don't know why no one loves me. You know what you need, Billy? To improve myself and bring more value to any potential relationships? No, silly. You need Manscaped. No one wants an untrimmed bush. 
Thanks, Manscaped! Terms and conditions apply. A trimmed bush does not guarantee love. Manscaped or conversations cannot be held responsible for how ugly you may be. That's right. For the month of March, we are sponsored by Manscaped. Yes. Support yeah. for Conversations is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in the men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 4 million men worldwide that trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code COMBROBALLS at manscaped.com. Yeah, bro, we are sponsored by Manscaped. Yeah. A legit sponsor. An actual sponsor, fitting. And Exactly fitting. We are burly men with hair everywhere, That's so this true. is great. This is That's perfect true. for us. Is and true. even better, I was a Manscaped customer before they came to us as well. I wasn't, so I'm a convert. So this is yeah. it. This is it. We're converting you. But I'm I'm happy because it's a it's a company that we cl I clearly like, and we get to talk all about them and tell everybody else about how yeah, great they we're are. We're sponsored now. Uh, yeah. They did send us a bunch of stuff for free, which is cool. Also very high quality. Oh mate, just, like, the, just the packaging as well. Like there's like uh, all this like lovely packaging in black and gold and stuff like that. And yeah, they sent us uh, the 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 4.0 package 4 where we get uh, the trimmer yep. for for your family jewels. And my God, it's so good! It it's is so light and so sleek designed. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Ergonomically, they fit really well in the in the hand. Even this nose trimmer, which by the way I'm digging, isn't an all in one. Mm, That's a mistake. Yeah. Exactly. So the, these are great. Yeah. And they also send you a nice pair of boxes as well in the box right That's there. That's right. Manscaped all over. I put these on whenever my girlfriend knows that she's gonna get a good time. Right. You know, of course, yeah. We saw it. We saw in the ads. So. She's thankful, Manscaped. Thank you very much. That's right. And um, but yeah, I really, really do love this trimmer. Multiple reasons. One, because I said it's like, look how beautiful that looks. It looks like a ship from Star Trek or something. Exactly. Yeah. So sleek and so right. shiny. Uh, I dig the light. The light on so it. You can exactly. see where you're going. Yeah. And crucially, when you say light, it's also very light as well. I yeah. had one before that was like big and industrial that barbers use those big ones. Yeah, yeah. And I was scared using that thing because. I don't want to cut myself in a really bad way. These, this is so 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 much cooler. It's so much lighter, and I have much more confidence yeah. when I'm using it. I'm a guy that used to use like beard trimmers for it, and then you end up having to get two beard trimmers because you don't want to be using the same one. And then they're they're never the right. Like this one, it's got like four different guard lengths. So you can choose what size you want. And um, I can't remember what they call it. It was like a safety thing on it. And I just I don't know. I just feel a lot more confident using it. With your family jewels, yes. right? Yes, so... Another thing that I really like about this, you know I love my tech, right? Yes, you do, yeah. I love that this is completely wireless, wireless charging yeah. and everything. It's got a little cradle that you just pop it in, it's just like, I'm charging, don't worry. It's cool, I'll be ready the next time you want me. It is me. cool, innit? I'm so, I love that, it's so cool. Very yeah, convenient. Really, really awesome. Very convenient. Um, Bro, this is uh, something that you guys can get in on everyone watching at home. Yeah. If you want to join uh, the Manscaped crew, then feel free. Get 20% off and free shipping worldwide with the code combro balls at manscaped.com that's our real code <laughs> that's, real code. Uh, that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code code combro balls unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with manscaped all right let's get back to the let's show, get back to the show. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back we are back from that sponsor which that's how was that works right that is how it works yeah, i think cool. that's how it works i hope we're it works if it doesn't work, then you just noticed a really jarring cut. <laughs> we just come back into nothing. Um, thanks, future and past. Thanks, uh, Manscaped. Uh, 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 yeah. Thank you, uh, Manscaped, for supporting right. us. Thank you over here. Uh, I believe this is our last week with them. So I yeah. think it is. I will say it was really unfortunate because I wanted it to be two weeks with one ad, two weeks with the other ad. But yeah. oh well. Um, I'm going to upload the ad separately, by the way. Yeah, the I think we thing. should. And we'll probably send the other ad to Manscaped, see if they like it, just to show them that we made it. Just because... Yeah. I frick them. I wanted to make it because it was fun. Yeah. Um, what was it? Oh, so you you just watched us talking about it, but genuinely now, after the fact, I'm actually using the product. Yeah. Uh, I did get it a little bit wrong the first time. They have like four length things. It's three, isn't it? Whatever. I don't know. Well, yeah, there, yeah. There's different lengths. I did go a little bit too short. Oh, um, yeah. I will say, you know, the thing about like mowing your lawn is you still want grass to be there. <laughs> You know, <laughs> no, down to the mud. <laughs> right, right, right. So, if you get the product, which I do actually enjoy, it, I really like it, and all the stuff we talked about, which by the way, I'm really in digging like the form factor and the, the charging dock. Oh, yeah. For super like Star Trek or, or Mass Effect, something about it just, I don't know, it's super satisfying. The ergonomics are great. 
uh, but maybe do use one of the uh, higher uh, guards. Uh, it's yeah. like facial stubble. You don't want it to be so short that it becomes like really hard and spiky. Yeah, you, you just want it to have unshaved. a bit of yeah, yeah, a bit of flex to it, so it can go up and down yeah. freely, so it doesn't like catch on your boxes and stuff like that. That's my personal take. Yeah. Everyone has their own. Per Some people like to be waxed like a baby, and it's like, all right, I don't know why, <laughs> but all right, yeah, fair enough. All right, wherever. Um, all right, bro. Yep. yep. So let's kick it over to the, the real big, main topic. The big, big topic. The one that's probably going to be yeah. on the thing here. CDPR have announced a new Witcher saga is in development. Yeah. And it will not be using the company's red engine. Apparently, they are moving over to Unreal Engine 5. What did Cyberpunk use? Red engine and then, as well. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about I it. Mean, tell me your thoughts. I will thoughts. say, I will say, Unreal Five actually just looks amazing. Yeah. So the idea that any company would go, let's just not use like our Frostbite engine. Let's use Unreal. Like hypothetically, I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah. Probably a good idea, or, or probably not a bad idea yeah. anyway. But the fact that their Red Engine, even The Witcher Three, which I loved, it's one of my favorite games of all time and set the bar for DLC at least when it came out had a bunch of issues not really stability and like it's quirky right it was very quirky, quirky. Uh, and then with Cyberpunk even on PC which is where it was clearly built to run well mm. it had has issues mm. maybe it's to do with like it doesn't like games of a certain size or complexity uh, you know I don't know I genuinely don't know but they had one winner that had issues and one flop mm. Why not use Unreal Five? Yeah. And then you can blame, you can blame someone else. <laughs> you know, I honestly think that that might be part of it as well. So, well, first of all, let me talk about. Let's talk about the uh, the. Let's talk about the scenes we're in. It. Right. The Unreal Engine Five side of it. I'm actually really happy about that. Yeah. Because we've seen the the demos that we've seen from uh, oh, from God, Epic yeah. Games. We've seen the the Matrix uh, Unreal yeah, Engine yeah, yeah. Five demo as well running. And that was fantastic. I feel like they're setting themselves up. If you get a good foundation, and I feel like there's a good place to build from there. Yeah. And at least we we know from what we've seen so far, the Unreal Engine has a very stable foundation so i think this is only good for the whole franchise yeah. and it sets them up for at least eliminating most of the p performance issues and bugs and stuff from the beginning it feels like they're future proofing the game yes because the red engine is not old but like in comparison to Unreal 5 it is old it has seems to have issues mm. and the Unreal 5 engine doesn't yeah at least not that we know of and it's much newer and seems to want to work better with new architecture. That's the thing. While uh, Unreal Engine 5 is new, it's still an iteration of Unreal Engine. Right. And this is the fifth iteration. It's just yeah. getting more and more better. Um, I, I can only see this is going to be good for them. I really, really like that they've gone for that and they didn't stick. They didn't do the EA stubbornness of like, no, everything's on Frostbite. It doesn't right. matter what the fuck it is. Frostbite everything, okay? We don't want to pay any licensing fees to anybody. I mean, that's the thing as well. Is like... You don't need to run a game on your own engine. Yeah. There's no need for that. So if you have a better product out there, mm. and also Epic, they know what they're doing. Yeah. Pretty much all they do is make money off microtransactions and make game engines. That's all they do, yeah. roughly speaking. You know, it's their bread and butter. So if there's an issue with Unreal 5, guess who gets to fix it? Epic. Yeah. Not your CDPR team, which, let's be honest, has been decimated. Actually, way worse than decimated. You know? And it's been stripped bare and then you've put it back together and it's not the same thing anymore. And that goes into our other point. So, <clears throat> The Witcher, a new saga has been announced. Yeah. How do you feel about a CDPR Witcher <sighs> game <clears throat> coming in the current state of CDPR? I was going to say, I was going to actually answer that. Three years ago, mate, I'd be buckets. I'd be dehydrated immediately. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now i especially because they lost so all of the team pretty much mm -hmm. anybody that made the witcher 3 isn't there anymore yeah right and let's put it this way they make the witcher 3 it's amazing they lose some of the team they make uh cyberpunk and it flops and then they lose all of the team so cyberpunk couldn't work with some of the team what makes you think that the witcher which is going to be even more highly awaited than Cyberpunk was, 
with a team that didn't build The Witcher 3 is going to bang. Yeah. So, I, you know, I... You put out a very good tweet, and I want to read that if that's okay. Because okay, yeah. I really, I really thought, think it was well done. Uh, they flopped Cyberpunk with some with the same team that made The Witcher Three. Now they want to return to an IP that that hasn't been burnt after losing what remained of the team that made the project a success. Zero percent hype, zero percent expectation. Likelihood it will flop ninety percent, but desire to be wrong one hundred percent. Yeah, and I think that perfectly encapsulates it for me as well. Everything is stacked against them for this right. game to be good. All, the, all they have right now is a good franchise. Yeah, they've got a good world. That's all yeah. they have. And then everything else is a con point. And I don't see how that's ever going to work out. I would love for it to be wrong. Yeah. But I'm very, very worried that they're going to ruin something that is great. I think, well, I think that's most likely. Uh, because The thing that really made The Witcher good was its writing, right? So, like... Yeah. The, the world was written so well it felt so real and even down to like story quests the way uh, side quests I mean like the way they arrived felt so natural it felt like you were talking to real fleshed out characters as you were going through it dilemmas like you have real dilemmas right like uh, you know the Red Baron yeah like do you kill that thing or do you try to like um, bring it back right uh, not bring it back but like save it break the curse yeah. right either way something bad happens yeah really is a dilemma uh and that kind of writing isn't easy and the team that wrote that couldn't some of that team couldn't make cyberpunk engaging and then they left the cadaver i don't think they'll have any problem making it a fun experience right like you just need some sword combat the signs like this is well known they can easily do it yeah they know the monsters you know yeah but filling that world, filling that that, that story, right. filling the dialogue. And then they're going, they are going to fall on one of two crutches: Vesemir or Siri. You think so? I would put money on it. So that's the thing. I um, that was something that I put online. It does say a new saga begins. Yeah. So we, and by that definition, it should be a new set of characters. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean now that. That could just, either mean just Geralt's story is finished, and yep. then we're moving on to someone else's story. Yep. Could be Siri, could be Vesemir, or it could be entirely new altogether. It, I think it will likely be a prequel series with Vesemir, mm. or you will pick up with Siri now. Mm. And the problem with that is Siri is cool in The Witcher because she's overpowered in a sense. Yeah. Right? You don't want an overpowered protagonist mm. in general. Unless you're making a Superman game, then it's fine. But that's like, but again, like the whole point of Superman is he get made vulnerable at points. Like that's the point. Exactly. That's you know? the that's the bit. Yeah. So, I feel like Siri's still are, emotionally and vulnerable and whatnot. No right. What. And the problem with Siri, the thing about Siri is we know a bunch about her power. So, like, are we going to world hop? And then if we're doing that, is it a Witcher? Mm. So then that's dangerous, dangerous ground mm. for Siri. So then, do you do a prequel series about Vesemir? And then when do you start? Do you start at the trials? Or do you start when he's like a young witcher? You know, and then you set up where like he tells some witch that he's going to take the law of surprise and stuff like that. Like, mm. oh, is that what you're going to do? And if you do, do you run the risk of ruining? Ve Vesemir in the game is so <clears throat> good. Like, I just... I just feel like it, it's, it's a minefield. And they have to nail what who the protagonist is and when they're setting it mm. is the is the very first like showstopper you know if like for example you pick siri are we gonna world hop yes that's a mistake are we gonna world hop no that's a mistake yeah so are we gonna pick siri which I, I i'm okay with playing as siri i don't mind it and i think they probably will they're very like i think they're gonna find a reason to make the protagonist the girl for political reasons or whatever even though Siri is just great I mean that's all the reason you need and that's, really. <laughs> that's going to be where I worry is that yeah. they won't make Siri because she's the best character choice and she's amazing they'll pick Siri because oh look at us we're mm. making a female, female protagonist like no one really cares it doesn't really mean anything you just want a good protagonist so Siri is do you mind if I give Go my for thought it, right. so I think Siri is a good option and I think it, it's possible right yeah you want dandelion games, innit? I do. That's <laughs> it. Give him, give me dandelion. That's what we need. <laughs> um, so what would you do? CD, CDPR <clears throat> messed up with Cyberpunk 2077. It was supposed to be 
a thousand times better. It's supposed to be the next big thing for them. Yeah. It's supposed to be twice, maybe three times more bigger than uh, The Witcher. Yep. And then they were supposed to grow The Witcher on the next one, then just become this powerhouse. That was their yeah. idea. It didn't work. They cannot sustain two flops in a row. No. And also, they cannot sustain burning the one good bridge that they have, which is The Witcher. I fully agree. Now, with that in mind... How much do you differ from the formula that made you win? <clears throat> do you go for a new character? Do you say a new saga, but really that's your definition for saying, okay, this is a it's new story. It's young girl. It, or, or even just in another, oh, it's a different complete area and what, it's a whole different story we're telling. It's still Geralt, but was because that's the thing. You go to if, a new, la like a new continent. Yeah. yeah. If it was me, if I'm a, if I'm a businessman, this is just the business side of things to reduce yeah. the risk, to make it as minimal as possible. Yeah. It's still Geralt. He's still doing his great thing. You just come up with a new epic adventure yeah. and you just go on like that. However, if you kill Geralt, and I don't mean like kill in the sense of that he dies, but if you ruin Geralt, yeah, company's dead forever. Do you remember when we it's were talking only, about it's Cyberpunk? The best shot they got, in my opinion. But yeah, I get what you mean there. When we were discussing Cyberpunk and what they would do next, I said, pat on the back to myself, what they should do is bring out some good DLC and they would do Cyberpunk two, and then come back to The Witcher yeah. and make Cyberpunk two good. Yeah. What they're gonna do is they're gonna go back to The Witcher and they're gonna burn that, mm. and that's still my prediction because i think that they're looking for all the wrong all the right decision in all the wrong places like who are we going to pick as a protagonist i think it's a really bad move to do either siri or Geralt, and it's probably a bad move to do vesemir especially if i mean mate they should take 90 percent of their budget and put it into the writing because mm. the rest you can make work you know well, one thing I do want to mention about this is that, first of all, there's there's a good sign and a bad way to look at this announcement. Yeah. First things first, the bad thing out of the way is that this isn't an announcement of a game. I agree. This is an announcement <coughs> that they are planning to continue this project that everyone loves. And so, con co coincidentally, it happens to be days before the end of the financial year. Yes. So they can get lots of investments and lots it's of for, oh, you interest. Know, it's that as well. Interesting how they did that, right? So, um, yeah, yeah, this isn't gameplay. This isn't anything like that. This is just, we are doing uh, the big thing that everybody loves. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they're going to flood us with money. That's, right. that's clearly what's been going on. Here. Crazy. Are you suggesting they would release a PR uh, statement just for investors? To make this it, terrible, terrible year of theirs not look so bad. I'm not gonna lie, it, this is very different to the CDPR we knew pre uh, Cyberpunk 2077. In the one where while you're waiting for the game to load, you're looking through the stuff and there's a thank you note. Like, we appreciate you, you're the reason this happens, yeah, all that. I know that this is a business, and I know that business people need to do things sometimes. But, and I know that they're in a shit situation. Yeah. They've lost a ton of time. And that's the other side of it as well, is that maybe this announcement, which is what these announcements sometimes are for, is that it's going to bring in talent that are like, oh, they ha probably have a ton of positions open. I want to work on this game. I'm passionate I'd love about to work Witcher. On Witcher. yeah. Maybe it'll, it'll bring someone great into this, which is the good side and of it. And it also gives these people three years to train. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's the... Uh, that's the the way another way to look at this announcement as well it's this game's probably be really far out though that, that's something we should all be prepared for like i'm thinking like 2028 not yeah it's it's many years away not yeah. to be like again i patted myself on the back a few times but i stand by that tweet it's probably gonna suck i hope it doesn't and i'm not getting my hopes up until it comes out and i have a look at it and it I'd, again i'd love to be wrong if it, it looks amazing and people tell me the story is amazing and because of we're in the position that we're in, we'll probably get it. Yeah. And I will let you know mm. if it's worth your money. And I really think you should wait for people that, whose opinion that you actually trust, not games journalists, but people that will play the game <laughs> more than six hours of it yeah. and let you know whether or not, like, I've let you know my opinion on Horizon Zero Dawn and it's not been popular and I haven't changed my guns because you don't like it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> That's what I think. Now, you're smart enough to know that I'm an idiot, <laughs> right? But the point is, like, you need to find people that you trust. It doesn't have to be us. And But do not spend your money on a game where you don't trust the company, yeah. right? Until you know more or you're getting at a severe discount. Question then. Yeah. Are you going to be a day one buyer of The Witcher, the new saga? 
this is based on your thought now this is not a simple yes or no because the real answer the real answer is by the time they come out with the collector's edition if you get the collector's edition and it's a hard disc no (laughs) if it comes with a digital copy yes (laughs) because we game share if it was if, if we didn't do this and i was just looking at the games i'm gonna buy as of right now i don't buy it i don't buy it i don't buy collector's edition don't buy any of that stuff mm. and i would probably pick it up by the way second hand because i'm annoyed at cdpr that's uh, feel like where a lot of people are although i will say the uh, just the announcement just this picture was like the second most liked Twitter uh, post yeah. in all of gaming history. Yep. The only one being a GTA Five uh, announcement. Yep. And I'm like, it's telling. People, people want The Witcher so bad that they were they're almost forgetting what's happening over here. Now, granted, that I like doesn't mean I've forgiven CDPR. Right. Well, it doesn't mean that. But get, with enough distance from the failed launch of Cyberpunk, I think people will like forget, not forgive, but yeah. totally forget that it happened which is different to forgiving um but <clears throat> you burn this bridge yeah. you are done cdpr doesn't make any doesn't exist after this if you cyberpunk a witcher game you're out they're done so and that's why i was saying they needed to do cyberpunk too because they could afford two flops on cyberpunk yes and, and come back to the witcher and make a even a middle witcher would do okay yeah doing this this is the nail in the coffin this is the the hangman's axe or whatever it is like they die after this if they get the witcher wrong they die that's why i think there has to be a a Geralt story again because you're going to change the formula too much and then you run the risk of ruining uh, getting it wrong and then ruining putting the last nail in the coffin like you said yep and i don't i'm not saying that that's what the new saga means i I get what you what you're trying to say people because a lot of people said to me it's like a new saga means new new uh, set yeah. of characters. I was like, I get that, I get that. But a businessman is happy to to, to switch on that yeah. or to say no to that, or we're, we're going back to Geralt at the last uh, whenever they decide to do the story, and and forget this ever happened just so they can guarantee that they can replicate yeah. the formula that came before. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's what I feel like that's what you do. But if they do it wrong, like you said, it's the end of the world. Yeah, it's, it's the end. They they don't Could recover. You, I, we, I if, don't want this to If it happen. bangs, though, that I'll forgive them. For, I will be like, oh, well, they should never have gone working. I could never stay mad at you, honey. Right, 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 right. I, I will say, um, not that I want this to happen. If CDPR messed this up <laughs> and they ruin their own name <gasps> and they close down after this, I can't imagine how they can stay open after this because uh, they're not going to be worth anything. Then... I will seriously, seriously, seriously love to see like a documentary of how it all went wrong. Right, and I'd right. love for CDPR to just open the doors and all the yeah. files so everyone can have a look at them. They go, yeah, we just fucked up at this specific point. Like, you know, have like Raising Kratos. It's just the opposite. It's like Grounding Geralt. Yes, yes, you know? yes. Oh, God, there we go. Yeah. That, that would be, that would so be very interesting, but they will never record it because they just will never record it. No. You know? No. And it'd be too many embarrassing things where it will just be so obvious these are bad decisions and the game's not working and it's not right, you know? It'd be so good to look at it from, like, you know, a hindsight and stuff like that. And yeah. even the developers... Like how you doing history at school. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, the, this happened and this guy got shot. And Checking out what the smoking yeah, yeah, gun yeah, yeah, was yeah, at yeah. the point. Yeah. Um, it would be uh, very cool to see the developers just, like, get their candid takes on it now the, now the company's been yeah, dissolved yeah. and be like, yeah, in hindsight, I should have said something here. I should have done something there. Anyway, um... One more minor thing that came out. This came out today, in fact, which yeah. is really cool. The lo- the uh, the medallion that you see in the snow yeah. in the uh, and I'll put it up on the screen here uh, for the announcement. People are like, "Oh, is it a cat? Is it the school of the cats?" Actually, yeah. it's a lynx, which is a, a big cat. A big cat, but medium cat. The school of the lynx doesn't exist in the canon, in the books, or anything yeah. like that. There is a fan story that's been made right and there's no i there's no idea whether or not uh, cdpr reached over to them and said could we take your story or if they're basing off of that or if it's nothing or entirely if they released it we, yeah we don't know but apparently uh there is that <laughs> in the in the world of fan theory fan fiction um it's apparently the school of the cat is comprised of of eskel uh sorry let me just quickly pull this up here Yes, I accept this. Yes, I'll take all my information. Yeah, yeah. Um, Eskel, uh, Geralt of Rivia. Obviously. Uh, Lambert and... Ve- oh, sorry. What? 
That's, this is the let last just, of the wolf. Let me just read this. The Lynx School appeared shortly after the official extinction of the School of the Wolf when its remaining members among the no among the notable Eskel, uh, Geralt Rivian, Lambert, and Vesemir's death. Okay, so after Vesemir's okay, death, they right. separated. And uh, the School of the Wolf... Oh, yeah. Continuing his work as active member of the school. Is, so it's Lambert, Kira, <laughs> and Eskel, they say. So here's the thing. <coughs> We know Lambert and Eskel. Yeah. And Lambert hates the fact that he's a Witcher. Yeah. He's incredibly resentful of it. And the only reason he's still here is because these guys are his only family. Yeah. And he's been put in a position where he can never be normal because he's a mutant and people hate him. Yeah. The only way to survive is to be a Witcher. And the only people that will tolerate him are Witchers. That's it. And he hates it. Hates it. And he's so well written. I freaking love Lambert uh, in the games. What about the TV show? <laughs> I, I just, I, again, this is a mistake. Let's say this, let's say that's true. Yeah. We don't know. We're just going to grant that it is the, what they're doing. That's not what the character would do. There is no way Lambert's making more witches. Yeah. I doubt Geralt's making more witches, you know? And, and also that knowledge has been lost. How is it gained? Which not difficult to fix in terms of writing but like we have characters that are well established as to not wanting to do this so now we need a really really good reason for them to want to do it and be willing to take 20 to 30 years before it pays off you know because yeah. <coughs> taking kids to fully fledged witches <clears throat> let's say if you can do it from the age of five and they're ready to go up 18 yeah. that is still oh my god my maths 13 years? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> My God, you're a math magician. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a wizard? <laughs> uh, so, like 13 years. B beginning start, if you could just immediately do it today. Yeah. So, what is this big bad threat that's 13 years away that they can tolerate? You know, it's so, you know, I'm not sure. I actually would have thought, if you were to do Geralt, <clears throat> and you wanted somewhere fresh, Maybe you pick up at the sort of in the end of uh, The Witcher 3, mm. where Siri presumably you don't get the band ending and she comes back. And then Geralt asks some questions about like, what are these other worlds? Like, she says, well, help, let me take you. And in between the jump, you get attacked by some unknown force yeah. and separated. And then the mission is to find each other again. Yeah, and so Geralt is a Witcher on another planet with humans and yeah. monsters where witches don't really exist or did or something, you know, whatever, and has to make his way while trying to figure out how to cross this barrier that Siri does. Yeah. And then we can switch back to Siri, like freaking pulling her hair out, either trying to figure out what's, cha like maybe she can't come back to get Geralt because this thing is after her. Mm. And so you have to deal with that. And then by the time you finally either get away from it or kill it, now we have to come back and we get to see Triss and Yen again. And she's like, this happened. How do I find him? Right? And you get to do Geralt somewhere else. And you get to have all your cool characters. And they're not ever involved in the current world that we have. Yeah. That is the safest way I can think of. At least off the top of my head. I haven't really thought about this. Yeah, it's just been here. Yeah. That's how I would do it if I was trying to get these same characters involved. Who knows, man? Who knows what's going to happen? I'm... Um, it's just this it's like you say it's a minefield that they have to try and like navigate and it's super super dangerous and the only casualty is them and really us of a, of a good game we're getting yes. of a good game. yeah for sure to put a final point on it for myself i would like a, a siri game i think that'd be really really cool Siri would be cool yeah siri would be a very I love cool siri. one if that's the, the way they're gonna go I'm, I'm looking forward to it and i'll be i like to see what's happening yeah. there um because her powers just are so interesting and she's like one of the different ones in, in all of the characters. It's just super different. Yeah. She's fun to play. I didn't I didn't hate in The Witch Thee when you play those sections of Siri. I was never like, oh man, I want to get to Geralt. I was like, oh sick. This is a cool change of pace. Yes. Siri's cool. I'm getting to learn about Dandelion who, you know, it was my first game. I didn't know these characters. I was about to say something. I was about to say like playing as MJ in Spider-Man. I forgot you haven't played Spider-Man. I haven't played it. <laughs> I haven't played Spider-Man. Oh my God. Uh, right we have discussed this. Right in a correcting conversation to tell him how terrible We have is. discussed this because in my head I have played it, but I didn't actually <laughs> play it. So like, I remember you talking about it, about how uh, uh, Aunt, um, Aunt May dies. And I was like, 
I don't remember that. Hold on a second. <laughs> That's weird. But then I was like, well, I must have seen it because of course I've played the game. It's a Spider-Man game. I've played them all, but I just missed the last, <laughs> what, like this and Miles Morales. I just missed it. Oh. Don't know how. Oh, God. Anyway, it was a very cool change of pace playing this series. And I think if done properly, you can, I, th I can't see a better way to do this game if you want to tick all those boxes. Yeah. I don't, I don't see it either. And then you could do, then you could do like, Either the monsters say the same because they split across multiple spheres or whatever they call it. So you don't have to worry about new creations. You could make new monsters. So you have scope for that. Something mm -hmm. we've never seen before. Uh, presumably, like, a lot of the stuff will still be consistent. Like, you know, they say there's no new ideas. Mm -hmm. Like, all of these worlds will have come up, realized how to control magic and stuff. So you can have, but totally new, like, hierarchies and stuff. And, yeah. and, like, and so you get to play as Geralt, who knows stuff, but not the same stuff that these guys know, even though it's like, you know, you, let's say you take two chefs and one's like a Chinese chef or a Japanese chef and one's like a European chef. They're both great chefs, yeah. but the different different ways to do the same stuff, you know? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. And then you also get to play a Syrian in Triss and yeah, and you could kind of find some like cool little games or maybe freaking Geralt gets to introduce Gwen to this world, you know? <clears throat> anyway, I can't see a better way to do it. I can't either. But I you'll really let me can't. know in the comments, right? Next let, week. Let him know how. For correcting conversations. <laughs> exactly. So look, if you're new around here, uh, is this a good spot for correcting conversations? We could do that, or do you want to read the comments from the people about this? Uh, about this yeah, topic? frick it. Let's read the Let's comments. Let's read the comments. Okay, so Alpha... <laughs> Oh, look at this freaking essay. Alpha, Alpha wrote into the Patreon, just yeah. like you guys can if you want to do that. Head over to Patreon.com. Um, he writes and he said, still need to start Witcher 3. What? This guy has not played The Witcher 3. Granted, I get you. It's a big game, so it's like a big mouthful to take. It is. But it's the most tastiest, juiciest thing you've ever put in your mouth. It's one of the best games. Exactly. And uh, I, you're ruining it. He goes, uh, doubt the new one will match the quality of Wild Hunt with all the praise yeah. it's been given over the years. And that's pretty much what we're saying right here. We're very worried about that fact right there. Play the DLC as well. You haven't finished The Witch 3 until you've done Heart of Stone and Blood and Wine. Yeah. Uh, Isak writes into our Discord server just like you guys can by clicking the link in the description. And he says, definitely interested in the new Witcher game. But since there's literally nothing known except it is a thing, I will not be setting my expectations until they release more info. Keeping the hype low. God, he's learned his lesson from Cyberpunk, yeah. hasn't he? Um, uh, especially after what happened with Cyberpunk 2077. So why did I read that? Yeah, yeah. I should have just read his comment. Uh, even though I unironically like the game, it's still not acceptable at launch and uh, still has a long way to go. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, are you also in the same channel? Yeah, yeah. Can you read the next Tailgate one? Tailgate says, <clears throat> I could never get into The Witcher 3 no matter how much I tried. I just wasn't made. It just wasn't made for me. So I hope it's good for the people who like The Witcher games. Fair. I can see how it would be hit and miss. It also takes about five or six hours to actually get get in yeah and i'm glad i got past that bump um i actually remember being like that you know i i play i oh <laughs> for me it's you i've you, always liked gaming right yeah but i didn't mature as a gamer who likes stories who likes really good like quality games until fairly late on yeah, in my gaming yeah. life i was just a call of duty guy and then i was like okay so every right. game just has to be the bland same thing of just shoot shoot kill and I remember playing Witcher. I was, I, it took me a fair amount to get into it. And I was just blindly yeah. going. I was like, wait a minute. So there's actually some, something else to this game. And yeah, it gets, uh, it gets more interesting. I remember feeling, feeling really overwhelmed in the first little bit. Because as you, you get out of White Orchard, it's specifically just after. You know, you're sitting down. You're going to go meet uh, the guy from Nilfgaard. And you're speaking to the barber. And that's where you do all your options. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I can't keep all, like, Tamaria, Redania, Nilfgaard. I don't know who any of these people are. So I'm really overwhelmed. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I was just like you know I'm just going to keep playing and I'll learn it I'll, I'll just do it and I, there was nothing else out and I didn't want to go back to COD and then maybe a few hours after that I was just so invested I don't know what happened but somewhere I'm like boom the Red Baron I'm like I, I need to know yeah. I've got to know uh, Virgin Diogo Helper says one CD public creation public relations <laughs> wait, wait, wait. two serial we riot three toss coin to your witcher and then he's got this great siri gif of d 
didn't ask plus ratio plus L. <laughs> which is hilarious. It is. Uh, do you want to find the next one? Go for it. Dark Diogo writes in, he says, with The Witcher, haven't played the... I wit Another one of our fake gamers in here masquerading as a true gamer. Fake gamer. Have we read him out as a true gamer as well. The ne deceit. Next the week. deception. The betrayal. <laughs> oh, you deceived me. You deceived me. I knew you would get that. <laughs> Next week, I'm going to read him out as a fake gamer. Um, haven't played a Witcher game or given the botch develop uh, and given the botch development and release of Cyberpunk, there's no way that I'm hyped. I, I think that's just the safest good. way to do it is just don't get your hopes up. And if it turns out there's a great game, great. There's a great game for you to play. You know? Yeah. Do you want to read Jeff Shrooms? Yeah, Jeff Shrooms says, The Witcher. Kind of pumped. <clears throat> but also it's likely they'll frick it up. Seems Witcher 3 may have been a flash in the pan because Cyberpunk's story was super mid. So I'm so glad you said that. Because a lot of people are like, no, I really liked it. No, Some people say they really like it, but I'm just like... It's, the story's mid, V is mid. Yeah. I don't, I just don't connect with V at all. I connect with Shepard. I connect with uh, Master Chief. I connect with Geralt. Mm. I don't connect with V at all. The only good thing is the two romances. Yeah, Th that's the thing. There's elements in there like that. Um, yeah. But there's, it, the quality difference in terms of like engaging you, hooking you on, on everything is just like, it's constant peaks and valleys. And right. I'm like... And the baseline, it's not like peak, baseline, valley, baseline. Yeah. It's like peak, huge valley, baseline, huge valley, baseline, peak, huge valley. You know, yeah. so it's all down here. It's, it's just, yeah. Uh, but I do hope they learn their lesson from Netflix that they shouldn't fuck up a series continu uh, continuity or betray important characters for cheap moments. And then the next thing's about Jade Raymond. Yes, the different thing there. Um, okay, yeah, that's everything there. Uh, very pretty much what i expected from our gamers right here i have said that they haven't played the game what the frick yeah what is going on like diogo as well he's sitting there watching anime all the time with his sister my man i mean you could be doing better things like playing the witcher <laughs> um also you can pick it up for a song now yeah like it is in my opinion it's one of the best games ever made it's a great story it's so well told also the next gen update's coming out soon so you yeah. should uh that's an opportunity. Everyone's going to be playing it. I know they I will be. In that. This is their, that is their first real attempt to make things right after divorcing themselves Could from you, Cyberpunk. Could if you they imagine mess something they up, mess it up and like, like a ton of bugs in there. Oh my God. And I'm how? Playing it how? The, the game's fixed. All you got to do is the graphics, man. Exactly. I swear. And performance is it. That's it. I'm playing it on, <laughs> I started playing it on PC modded and it's got like the higher resolution yeah, texture yeah. packs and stuff like that. And, it's amazing just with those. And yeah. if you can't do that, if you can't do what modders have done for modders, years. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. All right. Do you know what's going to happen? This is going to happen. You know how we said last week, uh, Horizon seems to release their games moments before yeah. a huge release. Yeah. You know Horizon's going to release two days after. Oh, or two days before The Witcher. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, you're right. You're totally right. You're totally right. And regardless of how good it is, it'll suck all the oxygen out of the room. Oh, it'll just be like that. You're 100% right. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that's all we need to know. When When is The Witch coming out? When's Horizon coming out? <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're, you're spot on. You called it. You called it in March of 2022. There you go, guys. Take note. Bookmark this video. Um, okay, bro. Let's kick it over to Correcting Conversations. Yeah, so look, if you're new around here, uh, we are saying things on the internet. and We've never let facts get in the way of a strongly held belief or even just something that we thought was funny to say. So when we say something wrong in this episode, what you do is you head down to the comment section of uh, this video uh, because we're totally abusing the algorithm here. And you leave a comment. You say, at 15 minutes and 12 seconds, when you said it was this, it was actually that. Right? And then next week, we read out your comment, we credit you, and we let you know why you're wrong and we're right. Because we have big, wrinkly brains. And you guys all have teeny tiny little, little, little smooth brains. And we know this for a fact because you watch our content. Exactly. <laughs> we don't watch our own content. We're not idiots. Come on now. That's <laughs> actually not true because we turn up to a lot of the premieres. We do, we do. So we that, do end up watching our own By content. the way, that's the reason for the last two premieres I haven't been here because I, I've been working at the new house. So yeah. Very sorry about that, but I need every minute to yeah. do that. I'll pop in every now and again, but it's not because I don't like you guys. I mean, it is because I don't like you yeah, guys. Yeah, that's but not the reason. It's, the, it's true, but it's not the reason. Exactly, exactly. It's because I'm busy, all right? But uh, I'll try and make as many as I can. Okay, so uh, we actually don't have any corrections. Because we're so freaking 
freaking smart. Our brains are so big and wrinkly. We have a also joke. Brains. And we have a uh, a praise of our good good takes. Okay. So let me start off with the praise. I feel like you're beating me here. Praise first like of all. Geth Prime writes in and he quotes us saying, Batflick is the most popular Batman. And he puts clap, 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 clap. He's like, now I know why I keep listening to this podcast because of the, the big brain, big, big wrinkly brain takes that you guys make. Yeah. That's, That's exactly right. what he said right there, by the way. I didn't change it for words at all. So um, thank you very much, Geth Prime yeah. right there. Love you so much. Love you so much. You've been enlightened to the great greatness. Right That's there. right. Um, and also a joke from uh, Alex Greenwood, our boy Hooky. He says, PlayStation is clearly already dead. He Obviously. Says. He says, why do you think they're scrambling to release all their exclusives, Horizon, Days Gone, Death Stranding, and now God of War, on PC? They know which platform is superior, and they want in. And I mean... It's just the death throes, isn't it? It's just the last twitches of the body before it finally gives up. <laughs> you know? And I thought my jokes were funny. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Insert uh, Joker gift right there. <laughs> <laughs> do like a laugh track. Yay! <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty funny right there. That Thank was very, very funny. Very, much. very yeah, well done. That's everything right there. And correcting right. conversations. Okay. Um, Normally there's a lot more takes, and they're almost all beefing me out. So I'm happy with that. Yeah, you didn't get any beef this time. He's he's feeling back. Guys, give him some beef. Come on, you know no, he wants no, it. No, 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 it's okay. It's <laughs> okay, just for once. You know. <laughs> we go? All right. Our next topic. Yeah. PlayStation acquires the newly established Haven Studios. Yeah. Despite them never producing a game, and after them already agreeing and making a deal to have their first game to be PlayStation I exclusive. I also thought this was strange. First deal is going to be exclusive. This, this was anyway. me when the when, this was me when the uh, when the announcement happened. I was just like. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Numbers fly yeah. everywhere. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> I really hope you edit that in. <laughs> I'm put there. It's gonna edit in though. Um, <laughs> for the audio virgins, you just missed the hilarious bit. Yes. Yes. Um, I like. I heard this and I was kind of like, aren't they kind of already? Like, because because when they, the whole like, oh, you know, Haven, Jade Raymond going all this stuff, it was kind of at a Sony event. Yeah. It was kind of like. Sony's kind of commissioning a new thing or supporting a new thing. They've got this exclusive deal. So, t two things. One, <clears throat> either they've moved really fast and have a lot to show, and they just Sony just loves the idea. Or, or two, this is a, a panic buy to get <clears throat> another studio with some big names because they're investing hopefully in the future they'll make something and they can pick it up for a song because it hasn't produced anything yeah uh i mean it's just weird news like jane raymond's great mm. like a, nothing wrong there yeah. the stuff that they're supposedly gonna make sounds great but we know weirdly somehow we know less about this than about starfield yes yeah because you know? at least we've seen concept art for starfield <laughs> <coughs> And Todd Howard said how he's really excited about it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm. I'm so baffled by this because it, it very. It's very different to the usual formula, the usual strategy that PlayStation employs. Usually, they're like, okay, we work with the company, we get going with them, we see how much success we can make together. One or two titles, and then we consider purchasing them. And this is like they all they've done so far is establish themselves, yeah. announce it's going to be a live service game. And with no proof in the pudding, right. they've just decided to go out and buy them. Right. Very risky move, and I don't know what that means. Like you said, it could mean that they saw what they've got on the table, and it's so amazingly outstanding, and they're like, oh my god, we need to get in on this. How about we buy them now while they're still small? But it's so risky to do that, because also, live service games majority of them don't work out yeah they're not super there's great. a potential for them to make a lot of money but majority of them turn out to be hype escaped <laughs> yeah so it could be that they looked at the project and went you know what we actually really need Bungie's help with this yeah and there's no way that you're getting that help if you're not under the umbrella yeah right so they will maybe they said it's possible you know, this this ticks two boxes we do intend f to be bought by somebody. Yeah. We've got this first game and we don't want it to flop, but it might flop on its own. Buy us early. 
for a good price and Jade Raymond's going to make a killing. Yeah. And then we can sort of share resources with Bungie and at least give this <clears> a really good shot of working, you know? Yeah. That could be what's... <clears throat> that's not the actual business discussion that will have had, had happened, but, like, that general premise... Then again, like I don't know, it's just weird. It's just very strange. Very strange. I don't <coughs> the know. Only, the <coughs> only reason this is news is because of Jade. Yeah, that's the thing. Ms. Jade, Raymond. In case you didn't know, in case you like live under a rock or you're driving your bus constantly because you're an audio virgin right. and you've got no time to research this. Uh, <coughs> Jade Raymond is uh, the co-creator of Assassin's Creed. Yeah. She is widely regarded as very good. <coughs> However, she's a producer, I believe. Like I think a, so, yeah. Producers don't do that much in terms of creation. They do. Uh, oh, you see, can be you can be producers, producers after you've created. So like Michael Bay is producer on tons of things and whatnot, but that's because he's made tons of movies and he's say, just getting old. And I he would doesn't say it like this: that producers are <clears throat> a good producer is often the reason that what the creatives need to happen gets done. <clears throat> so it's not like producers don't do anything, right? Mm. They're really, really important. That's why they exist. Yeah. Uh, and also, I would expect that because she is like who she is and is the producer, that she would also have a lot of uh, final say votes. Yes. Yeah. So even though she might not be like creative lead, she could probably shut down a terrible idea from a creative lead or a good idea and say like, we can't make that happen. So it yeah. can't be done. You have to come up with something else. So I feel like she probably has a lot of impact in the way in, in the way in which it happens. I think good stuff often has really good producers yeah. that's, that's all I, and I don't really know what they do in in the actual like day to day yeah it's a very loose term <laughs> producer anyway yeah. it's like it, they can mean a lot of things it could be financial backing it could be more cre it could be more like thought break. right uh, it's, it's a ton of stuff yeah but anyway, she's the co-creator now of this uh, of this studio, and she's going to be a lot more hands-on, I guess, because you don't start a studio and be right. like sitting on the side yeah, doing I'm nothing. Start a studio, I don't want to do any work. Though. Five hours a week. Can I just sit back and get some money? No problem. Right. No problem. Um, <clears throat> let me read off some uh, some thoughts over here. So over on patreoncom forward slash conversations Alpha Aquilele writes Aquilele. in, and he says, "The acquisition is an acquisition." This is true because. Without seeing what the game is or knowing what the hell it is, right. this is just like buying a, a a pint of milk from the shop. Yeah, it's it's very I strange. I now have milk. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah, do you need milk? Well, I have it. There we go. Done. Right. <laughs> it, it, it's weird, isn't it? It is, it is odd. <clears throat> oh, God. I, you know what the funny thing is, is that, you know, like the joke is oh with sony ponies and stuff yeah. like that there are probably a ton of xbox that are like these guys are gonna ham this up as the the greatest acquisition ever it's like it's really not we, i mean we don't even have it, concept art it might be great i'll tell you everything we know about it is bad <laughs> other than other than jade raymond don't Lives. like live service don't like that we don't know anything about it and they've already been acquired right. to me that actually is, sounds like more of a mistake mm. than anything else don't like the fact that they were acquired without the traditional track record. Yeah. You know? Now, maybe maybe the team conglomerately <clears throat> has all worked on other stuff and they've gone, you've all worked on stuff that has hit that we've acquired anyway. Yeah. So you're functionally, you would have been employees and it's, it's close enough. You know, there's a bunch of stuff we wouldn't know. But like, it's just not how they've done things. Why get away from the recipe of success? You know, yeah. what you could have, what they could have easily done is say, okay, we're going to sign a contract, bring out the game. When it bangs, we acquire you. you and that's in writing. <clears throat> you want to be acquired by us. We want to acquire you. The game has to hit this metric, yeah. which you can even set relatively low, and we buy you. It might have, a, there might have been a conversation like that, but to be honest, that's all, there's also a risk of saying that as well, because if you, if it does bang, well, do we actually need you? There's always that conversation as well. I don't know. That's true. But that is a. But that's the thing. It's it's, it's a very more confusing, of a. It's supposed yeah. to be a, a proven thing, yeah. right? It's not this just aimlessly by anyone because. Right. You know what? What it could be though. So, Kojima got his his studio started yeah. and his engine from from Sony. He got his start from PlayStation, yeah. and in return, they made the first game that he made yeah. PlayStation exclusive, and we got a fantastic game out of it, in my opinion, and that's great. The rumor is that he's also making now an Xbox game as well as also a PlayStation yeah. exclusive having game as well. Basically, having been set up by PlayStation, he's now a free agent, which they knew at the time, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm thinking maybe internally playstation's a little bit salty about that it's like we gave you this start and now you've got you're going to yeah, make yeah. Uh, games for our competitor we know you're very good and we know we can't dictate you so we're just gonna have to swallow that anger yeah and we should have had more control when we had more say now you've got big wins under your belt exactly we didn't acquire you early enough yeah and oh. that's kind of and that, that that could be yeah. it and, and maybe they're seeing that with this maybe they're going look jade we like so far what you guys have got going on here we think you guys have huge potential Let's get in on the ground yeah. level. Let's get this done. I could see that. That could be a way to it. Although it doesn't eliminate the risk. It doesn't Again, eliminate the risk. I feel like you, could, you could say, if the game's good, we buy you. That's a better way to do it and keep the current structure. Yeah. I don't know. It's very strange. It's very weird. Yeah. Jay, like I said, Jade Raymond's good. But like, is she enough? Yeah, I do you know what uh, George, for example, when he was last on the podcast, he was very excited about it, and yeah. I was like, "Is that just your inner Assassin's Creed fan talking, or is there something genuinely right. with her that you like?" She she is very talented. It's like yeah. whenever we hear, uh, oh god, why have I, I've completely forgotten her name, Noi Dog, Neil Druckmann, the oh god, she did Uncharted, uh, Amy Henning, a Amy Henning. Uh, you hear Amy Henning's doing a project? Great, it's yeah. in good hands. Right, so she, it's of that level yeah. of like confidence. But I don't just go, oh, Amy Henning's doing it. It's going to be good. I go, Amy Henning's doing it. I need to keep my eye on this. Yeah, like with Forspoken. She's on right. that. I'm feeling a little bit cold on it, to be honest. But I mean, because she's attached to it, I want to check it out. Just two things, right? Pros and cons. Female protagonist. Exactly. Con. Big, big con. Big con. Then again, she has a painting. True. Plus. So it evens out. Yeah, exactly. You know? so, but like, <laughs> like you know, like I said, just because it's weird because you have like this kind of almost business cult of celebrity, mm. and that's not gonna. It's not enough to dictate if a game's gonna be good. Yeah, it just means that it's got a good chance of having its best shot at its best self. Yeah, that's all it really means. Yeah, so. I don't know. We have to wait and see. So weird. So it's very weird. strange. Tailgate writes into Discord and he says, The acquisition of Haven Studios, I think Sony bought them for the same reason they bought Bungie. They want talent that are good at making live service games and tech related to live service games so that they can share the knowledge and experience across uh, across each other. I all their studio, <coughs> all their studio and Mark Cerny's across all of their studios I think there wasn't supposed yeah, to be yeah, a full yeah. stop there across all of their studios and Mark Cerny is closely involved with the development that's another thing closely involved with the development of Haven's first game so it'll be interesting to see how much they utilize the PS5 features I'm very interested in the Haven's yeah, game for too. that reason me too <clears throat> that man is a wizard but then again it's the same thing we hear Mark Cerny and we go oh amazing but like again all True. it means is it has its best shot at being yeah. its best version of itself yeah we don't know if it'll be good, just that it's likely to be its best version of it. Yeah. He's not a story guy, for example. So oh, he's full tech. Completely he's in, full tech. Completely disregards that. So, yeah, yeah it, again, I, d I don't know, man. Yeah. Odd. Uh, Jeff Shrooms says, on Jade Raymond, it's tough to say. The game is basically a myth at this point. We will see. And lastly, Shep's Horizons Hot Takes when? next piece of content mate there you go there yeah. you go next piece of content should come out on sunday I think yeah so, sunday so you can check that um <clears throat> diogo writes in and he says wait wait uh <clears throat> we'll wait and see but i believe uh haven is making a live service game which doesn't interest me that's the general feeling i mean especially as a sony fan because we've grown we've grown accustomed to those beautiful story games with great narratives yeah. in them when you give us a live service game, it's a lot of uncertainty, uncharted wars. <laughs> also, um, there was a comment <clears throat> earlier about, uh, you know, they probably acquired them because of their expertise in life service. I don't remember the team that came with Jade Raymond. That's the thing. I think he's, uh, either he's confusing his words and, he, and he's trying to say that they acquired... The Haven Studios was open to being acquired by Sony because they have this tech of Bungie now yeah. and they wanted to work together. That makes sense to me, yeah. Because I don't think Haven had any expertise that, that Sony were purchasing. Yeah, not in particular. Like they weren't particularly known for it. That, I, that's the thing. I don't feel like there was any names as, mentioned that as were as like... Far oh. as, as far as I can see, the only live service game that isn't an MMORPG, which is in and of itself a different animal, that's found any real success is Bungie. Yeah. So, 
Uh, not Bungie, sorry, Destiny. Bungie's Destiny. Yeah. So I think it's probably that way around. But again, I don't remember who the team is. They could have some real serious names in the live service. Yeah. That I don't I don't know. You might be right. All right. Well, that's everything to talk about that uh, topic. Is there anything else you want to say finally on Haven Studios? <clears throat> no, we'll wait and see. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I really don't want us to starfield this. Yes. You know? Or maybe but we should for fun on Twitter. That's it. Haven Studios is the new Starfield. That's right. And it's going to be, in fact, it's better. Well, it's already Facts. already proven that it's better than Starfield. Yeah, because well, Starfield hasn't... They weren't pub bought by Sony. Exactly. So that was obviously shit. When you have the PlayStation brand above your head, automatically you're right. better than anything. That's a fact. Was, automatically. <clears throat> um, did you see I've started to bait people under the PlayStation posts? They acquired Haven Studios. And I was like, great, next buy Xbox. <laughs> and people are like, are you stupid? Xbox can buy 14 of Sony's. And I was like, bro, how did you fall for this? Oh, you're so how dumb. How did you fall for this? So dumb. How did you fall for this? <laughs> By the way, talking about Xbox just came up. Uh, I saw a YouTuber do an in-video ad read for Game Pass. Yesterday, yeah. Last night. Alex Steele is a guy that makes like I don't know, he's a blacksmith. So like, one of those like weird three in the morning. A uh, blacksmith. Videos. Yeah, yeah. So not even gaming related. No, he's done a bunch of ads for like uh, Raid Shadow Legends and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, but, but that's for the lols. He was making that. he was making a hammer for a guy that was based. You know, the guy wanted something from a game, and the in in video ad was for Game Pass, and I'm like, man, what the frig? It's found you. It's game weird, Pass has found you it's on weird. the internet. It's so weird. <laughs> All right, let's kick it over to our final topic. Uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has officially been delayed yeah. to 2023. I thought that it had already been delayed officially. It had, hadn't it? What it was, and I, this is the weird thing, I, it was one of those, what's that syndrome called where something... Oh, yeah, 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 uh, the Mandela effect. Mandela effect, that's it. The Mandela effect where everyone assumes this is the way. It's where people think things happen in movies and then you go back and watch it and it's yeah. like, shit, that didn't happen in that movie. No. But everyone thinks it did. Anyway, uh, I thought it was delayed. But apparently it was a leak from Jason Schreier that it was going to be delayed. Right. And it hadn't been announced for months and months and months and we just took it as, as, as their word. And now it's officially been delayed. Cool. Um, I'm okay with it for the fact that it's, you know, it's WB games are getting a little bit crowded anyway with Hogwarts Legacy and yeah. Gotham Knights. However, this was the one I was looking forward to the most out of all of the WB yes. lineup. A rock steady game with characters that I, I like, especially the Justice League part of it. And it's, it's being delayed, which is upsetting. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's funny. I think you should put out a tweet earlier saying that, like, this really sucks, but, like, maybe we'll get a better game out of it. Mm. That is the exact same logic we had with Cyberpunk. Mario said this thing to you. He was like, he's like, do you know what? I'm kind of getting pissed off with people putting release dates down and not hitting them ever. It's like 90% of games now get delayed out of their, yeah. their release date. Yeah. Don't announce a game if you don't feel like you can hit that confidently. Right. And I piled on. I was like, yeah, that's really dumb. That's stupid. And also, stop announcing games that aren't real yet. Stop yeah. Elder Scrolls uh, is if coming just up have to four script, years. If you just have some scripting, you don't have anything. No, you no, don't have anything. No. Same goes for uh, the Wolverine game. They didn't have anything, but they just showed off a, a, a CG the title trailer. and whatnot. I mean, that, that takes a team of five guys two days. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, Elder much. Scrolls has been has been teased four years ago. Yeah. Still nothing, and it's allegedly not even begun production over there. This is what. I mean. Just stop it. Just stop. Witcher as well. That yeah, gets out. Yeah, yeah. Stop doing that, people. Yeah. The, what they should do when it comes to release dates is you get to the point where the game is almost ready and you say, we're ready in three months' time. The release date is a year from now. So that it is fully done yeah. and you spend nine months polishing it <clears throat> and testing and stuff and you have no crunch. Yeah. And the game release is working and, and good and no delays, you know, boom, done. Great. So stupid. It, so stupid. It, why is this? <coughs> also, it's like it's a trend. Like, it's not OK to delay your game. Yeah. Games used to release and they used to have to work. Yeah. 
What? It's why, um, like, and the thing is, when the game comes out and it works and it's and it's great and everything like that, you've had the appropriate amount of time. You get a reputation, you get a brand that re that has that actually means something. That's why PlayStation Studios is the best brand yeah. out there because <sighs> they consistently produce gold. I ca I have to say, like, yeah, there are bugs and things that don't always work, but like, when any of those Sony games come out, they work. And yeah, yeah there's all, day one patch and stuff. It's always something that happens, but yeah. like. When I play the game, my first experience of it, almost always, is that it works pretty much flawlessly. Yeah. You know, it's not ever like game breaking, but nothing to the level of Cyberpunk. And to me, it's nothing to the level of The Witcher. You know, The Witcher had all sorts of weird things that yeah. happened. <clears throat> and when I put in, I was going to say Spider Man. When I put in things like uh, <laughs> The Last of Us, Mandela or Ghost of, yeah, or Ghost of yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> or Ghost of Tsushima, it just works. Yeah. It just works. You know? Um, a couple of things that people said about it. So, uh, Eagle, which is uh, Alpha Aquila, he says, uh, Suicide Squad delayed, standard protocol. If a game needs time, it needs time. Just hope the wait is worth it. And that's pretty much what we can all do uh, and hope for. He said you should also both watch P Peacemaker. Uh, Peacemaker, Peacemaker well. yeah. I've heard only good things about that. Apparently, it's great. I've heard good things. And the problem is, is that I don't... The, the ending, have you heard the ending? No. Part? We'll talk about it on the Combros podcast. Okay. But there's, a, there's an ending part that pertains to us as as Snyder verse fans. Oh, are you saying that they actually mentioned the podcast? They actually mentioned <laughs> They mentioned these two Snyder verse fans over here. Yeah, they, the they, branding's podcast. all orange. It's so strange. Who uses orange? <laughs> <laughs> um and I think I that's, that's everything it. from then. Okay. So um final little mop up things just to mention off uh as we go by. Um Microsoft themselves have announced that they are investigating why the Xbox Series X is constantly being outperformed by the PlayStation 5 in third-party games. Gasp! It's really what funny a shock. because... What a surprise! There's a lot of Xbox out there that are like, the raw power of the Xbox will will beat the PlayStation 5. It will be... There was even a guy that said something stupid that uh, the Xbox will outperform the PlayStation by 50 to 60 frames per second. <sighs> and I was like... That is ridiculous, yeah. Anyway, uh... Apparently, even though the Xbox Series X has like 12 teraflops of power and the PS5... Again, we said this before. Boosted of ...how it develops it. Exactly. And Mark Cerny said this. This is why we like Mark Cerny so much. He said this in the uh, the deep dive conversation. Yeah. Like, in the new stage of RDNA 2, whatever, teraflops is an incredibly bad way of uh, measuring performance. Yeah. Anymore. And it just shows because, proof is in the pudding. Yeah. And it's just interesting because now they've said they beat us on games. We know the recipe. Yeah. They're being us on performance. They're going to find out the recipe. What you think they're not going to buy a PS5? They can pay the $700, yeah. whatever the gouge price is, right? Like, they, they know. Yeah. And they've known for years yeah. about the games. What have we seen? Maybe Starfield will be a banger. We'll see. We'll see. Let's see if it's a third person story driven <laughs> RPG. <laughs> Uh, PlayStation uh, also announced that after the purchase of Haven Studios, which is a live service thing, people obviously got worried. Are you just going to be making a live yeah. service game? They reaffirmed that we will always be making single player narrative games like Horizon, like Go Ghost yeah. of Tsushima, yeah. etc., etc., which is what we could want to PlayStation also uh, released a brand new update, which is, but does a bunch of party things, a little bit of trophy stuff to make them yeah. look a little bit nicer, a few extra hidden details. But the big thing is that they said uh, in the coming months, they're going to release another update that will enable something called variable refresh rate. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have you heard about that? Yeah, it's a, it's a way that it basically makes performance look smoother on a monitor that's enabled um if you have a vr monitor the playstation itself will like match the refresh rate of the frame rate of the game yeah and it will seem less jarring cool feature it's been on the xbox for donkey's years i was years, gonna say and that's one that, thing that just keeps coming up i see in all of the console threads and it's apparently amazing did it, your foundry say it's amazing it's a cool Can't it's a very it. cool feature i think it will add more to it will add a lot to a lot of it will add a lot that you'll never notice. Yeah. Which you'll is just the notice it's a smooth experience. Yeah, it's a good it. movie soundtrack. You shouldn't really notice it unless you're looking for it. And then you'll go, man, I'm so glad. Like, yeah. well, I don't know why this movie was so good, but it was great. You know? Yeah. Uh, and final th uh, little bit of news. Unfortunately, Xbox have beaten PlayStation to the punch. Yep. Xbox is getting Wolverine before PlayStation. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, they desperately need something, don't they? There we go. And this is going to be the final nail on the coffin. Unfortunately, PlayStation were just too slow, and Xbox are getting Wolverine before before PlayStation. I mean, granted, it's a partnership with a brand called Wolverine that sell boots. Right. But still, Wolverine is on Xbox before PlayStation. It's exclusive. And luckily, you can get these boots in HD on your PC. Yes, oh, exactly. Oh, wait, no. It's just a brand. <laughs> <laughs> also, because I, I, I saw this, and it, it literally, the post is a picture of, it says Wolverine with a logo that isn't Wolverine's. Like yes. It's very clear, yes. nothing to do with Wolverine. It's just the word Wolverine. And then it says Times Halo. And then people are like, oh, we're getting Wolverine. Like, what? what? Like, it, did Halo Infinite become Fortnite? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? I really don't understand this. These partnerships are so strange with Microsoft. Like, Microsoft have a partnership with a nail polish brand, and they and they market it with Xbox. And I'm like... Is it a nail brand that only does, like, Xbox green? No, no, it's so many colors, like purples and yellows and oranges. And I'm like... Okay. Why? And then it's Halo weird. is partnership partnering... With a boot brand? Yeah, it literally says step inside. Yeah, a home to Wolverine, a, hundred, a thousand mile collection, high performance work boots and casual footwear. Who's what? Your, who do you think your demo is? I don't understand <laughs> these partnerships. And they announce it like it's like, guy, like you know how PlayStation announced Haven Studios? Yeah. It's like, guys, it's finally happened. Step inside. It's like, what are you talking about? This is... Uh, no one cares. Your demo is not going to care about it's this. It's crazy. I don't understand. They're insane. Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, and that's all the topics that we have for today. Gaming. We have some gaming questions. Uh, well, first of all, I want to ask you a gaming question. Okay. Uh, I put this tweet up this morning, and I think you saw it. Oh, earlier. Gotham Knights. Okay, so I said this is my tweet, and I want you guys to write in the comment section who you choose out of this. Let's make the tough call, cool gamers. You can only pick one game from the list below, and the rest are deleted from time. Which game do you choose? You can pick one game to keep. The rest are deleted from time. Gotham Knights, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, Spider-Man 2, or Wolverine. Which one do you keep? And which one do you delete from time? You, sir. Gotham Knights has to go. Yeah? It's got to go. And I'm a DC show, but it's yeah? got to go. What are the other ones that you're going to you're gonna axe off then? Oh, wh what was it? So you keep one. Oh, you and keep axe three. one. There you go. I'm... <sighs> By the way, Alpha's crying right now because he loves his Gotham. Nets. I'm keeping Spider-Man. Yeah, I'm keeping Spider-Man. I don't, I don't, I really thought it was one has to go, but like Gotham Knights is gone, no questions. We've had a lot of good Spider-Man games, but I'm not so trusting that Wolverine or Suicide Squad would be as good. Mm. Let's just keep what works, and we know we can get mileage out of it. We literally we can get Miles Morales. We get mileage out of it. Yeah. But, and this is uh, one of the guys, is it Big Toe? And there was, uh, I, I don't know, what, where is he? God damn it. Yeah, Big Tone. Big Tone wrote, and he, was, and he said Wolverine easily, to be honest. And I was like, I'm a simp for Wolverine. I hear say. you. Wolverine has the potential. And he's Sucker Punch. And it's Sucker Punch. And, uh, it's, no, Insomniac. That's what I said. We're, it's doing, Insomniac. we're doing that thing again. We're doing the meme unironically now. Exactly. Um... It's Insomniac, and it's one of the coolest characters in the Marvel He's universe. so sick, yeah. But it's the one with the most uncertainty. Yeah, we have only a 30, 12 seconds <laughs> cinematic. We don't know anything about it. I'd love, I'd love it, but, bruv, I've got to go to the loo. Yeah? I, I, yeah, I was <laughs> like, I was trying to find a good point, but like, He's I was like, oh, I, I maybe I should say it while you're introing this stuff so you can cover the dead air, but I, I have to, I have to. If I'm you like have an to old go, man. go. <laughs> He's uh, he's unfortunately got the bladder of a of a hamster now. We've proven it on this on this podcast. Don't worry, guys. I know you really wanted me. I know you really don't care about ships. You're like that's why you keep writing every year, every uh episode with correcting conversations, and it's all about ships because you just want to hopefully grind him down. That he just goes, you know what? I'm out. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, baby. <laughs> Isla's here. Isla! Her hand has poked through the door. Hey! Come! Come! Come say hi! Come say hi! <laughs> you can see yourself on the, on the monitor. Ah! Super excited! <laughs> Isla! 
Do your face. Do the face. Do <laughs> you want to say hi to everyone? Say hello. Say hello. Hello. Oh, she's looking at my phone now. Hold on, is it? Look. Say hello. Hello. Give Baba a kiss kiss. I know. Give Baba a kiss kiss. Mwah. <laughs> That's definitely staying in the episode, just so everyone knows. <laughs> she was just super cute. All right. <laughs> right, we'll cut that little, just the little 70 year old man <laughs> episode out. Like, a, uh, it's so annoying. <coughs> that, this like rarely happens to me and always on podcasts yeah. where I'm like suddenly like, I can't, I can't Holding hold it. it. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So that was, uh, I, I, I get you. I get what you mean about the, the like, the uncertainty of oh, Wolverine we're just gonna pretend like, that you didn't just rinse me for five minutes. No, 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 not at all. Uh, <laughs> honestly, genuine question: Am I wrong? Do, is there any reasonable argument to go the other way? Like, I would—I'm a DC show. Yeah. I'm fully honest about it, but like, other than Batman, we haven't had a lot of good stuff out of them. Would the Suicide Squad be fun? Probably, but. I'm, it's not going to be better than Spider-Man. It would just be a cool DC game. I, that's what I think. I, <clears throat> I, while I am really excited for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and yeah. it is rock steady, so I'm really excited right. about another rock steady game, and they have produced a lot of greatness, it's tough for them to beat Spider-Man, right? Right. But I will say, I'm tempted to choose Wolverine, because while if we delete Spider-Man 2 from existence, we yeah. still have Spider-Man. True. And that's fantastic. True. And we still have Miles Morales, and that's still fantastic. And if we get a freaking great Wolverine game out of it, that's just another game we could just plant in the ground yeah. and be like, yeah. gamers, we got this now. You're not wrong. And that, but but it's such a risk. It's it such is. a risk in combat. Like, I know Spider Man Two is gonna smack. I, I know that you can. It's like how we knew Elden Ring was I, gonna smack. Yeah. <laughs> and like the thing is that like, Insomniac might not miss or might not miss very often yeah but it doesn't mean that they hit everything you know like just because it's not just because it's not bad doesn't make it good do you know what i mean yeah or vice versa like it, it, it's there are just so many unknowns and the thing is like while wolverine is very cool he's not so utilitarian like you can put spider-man in a lot of issues in a lot of situations and he can be very cool and um hero -y. Yeah. Ultimately, you are taking a dude with razor knives in his arm yeah. who fights by stabbing you with razor knives. Really strong because he's like, he can regenerate. Well, he's a mutant he and stuff, yeah. Exactly. But he's still a dude. He's still a dude. And, and it's like why nobody likes Batman. It's just exactly. he's a dude. But like with, with Pete, he's punching people, knocking them out, and webbing the villain to the wall. Wolverine's just going to kind of kill people. It's like, I'm going to put six perfect holes in your chest. Right. There we go. There we go. I'm a hero, guys. <laughs> hero. Don't worry, guys. Not all heroes wear capes, okay? Right. I'm here in my yellow spandex. In spandex. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. When Batman does it, though, terrible, terrible. Um, okay, yeah. I, I actually that... wasn't even going to go there, but I totally agree. <laughs> Let us know in the comment section who you think will be the one that you would pick, all right? Which one would you say, this is my game? Fuck for the, all the record, rest. For the record, there is definitely an argument that is like, we have Spider-Man games. Let's do something new. And I mm. get it. What do I think is going to be the best and the most fun of them of the lot? I do think it will be Spider-Man, mm. and that's why I, I'm picking it. I would love to play the Suicide Squad. I would love to play the Wolverine game. I think they, I think they're going to be a lot of fun, and I think Spider-Man Two is going to be better. Mm. So that's all I can say. And we're not talking about freaking DCs. Shut up, Aquila. La, 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 la. How dare you, Alpha? Finally, we have one question from uh, from Dark Diogo. He writes in and he says, "Gaming question." Favorite gaming accessory? He says, yes, I'm talking about Sega CDs to the Mega Drive, the PS1 mouse, and yes, it had a mouse. I still remember that. Oh, boy. Or the widely loved Xbox 360 wireless adapter. I mean, that was iconic. Yep. I mean, that's what, that's what brought network gaming to the, to, to the 360. Um, You're an idiot. The best gaming accessory of all time was the either the light or the magnifying glass on the original Game Boy Color. That's it. Case closed. Yeah, we're not even going to... It's being thrown out of court. You're an idiot. Or 
or the printer so you could print out your your Pokemon. Basically, it's for the Game Boy. <laughs> the, uh, and really, I know that the original Game Boy was was it's iconic as well. But like for me, the game we're talking about the Game Boy Color. Yes. I don't know why, but something about the Game Boy Color is just better than the OG Game Boy. I want to buy an OG Game Boy just to have it, but... I'm going to put this video up as well. Did you yeah. see me post this? I said, yes. this is peak gaming. You may not like it, but this, this is, is what it looks gaming. like. Yeah, And it's all the accessory, all possible accessories that you could get on one Game Boy Color. Like, there's a battery pack with a handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's extender buttons. There's a magnifying glass. There's a speaker at the bottom that you can put in there. A light and a, 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 a pre Game Boy Color yeah, 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 pack, yeah. an adapter. And Mate, this um, is some Batman level shit right here. This is it. This is it right here. This yeah, is sick. And it feels. Do you know what it feels like? It feels like going from a. Uh, also, look, a normal, all, the, all different colors. I love it. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a complete mishmash. Uh, it's like going from a normal Power Ranger Megazord to yeah. the, the ultimate Megazord. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, my yeah, final yeah. form. And. Um, just gorgeous you know? weirdly on this note i found a channel you know because i don't sleep uh i can't remember exactly the guy's name it's like the retro something and he basically takes all these uh, like old game boys up that don't work like a feeble and repairs them and stuff gets them right. working but he also does these mods so like there was one where you can change out the screen for a totally different for like oh, a shit. fully fully hd color screen Backlit and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay and it's sick no and i was way. looking at it and i'm like I'm not going to do it to my Game Boy Color. But, like, if I got another one and the screen's like 60 quid, but then I'm like, but it would be OG Pokemon in full HD, like, color and stuff. It's like the time we went from standard definition to full HD and we saw the news anchors and how wrinkly their faces are. Right. Like, oh, oh, God, this is a good, we're going backwards in time. There was this that meme about 4K. <laughs> about how like porn stars were all going to be out of work because you couldn't see like the pores on their faces and stuff. And I it. can see her C-section. Oh, guys. Right, right, right. <laughs> all the little imperfections and this stuff. This is not what we needed. <laughs> right. So uh, that's the answer is it's the Game Boy. His answer says mine has to be the Nintendo Power Glove because who doesn't want a game whilst looking, at a ma looking like a master hacker? That's... I mean, it's a good second place. On a cool factor, it's up there. Right. Because the Power Glove, you're just like... The bitches yeah. were falling around. Right, right, it was very uh, like Yu-Gi-Oh with the gauntlet thing. Yeah, it was cool. I was like, ah, put the card down. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I have to say, it's that. And also, I have fond memories of the Nintendo 64 adapter so you could put your Pokemon card in the uh, 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 cartridge yes. in the back. So you could have your Pokemon. And I'd play Pokemon Stadium yeah, with, yeah, my, yeah, uh, with yeah. my Pokemon. But yes, bruv. Even though, and this is the dumb thing about Pokemon Stadium, is that you could choose from any Pokemon. Oh, yeah, but it, that wasn't your one. Exactly. No, and I'm they, with you, bro. I know were, exactly what you were talking about. They were max level in the game, but I had to have my Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, That's because it's better to have your level 57 Alakazam yeah. than a level 100 Alakazam. It's just an Alakazam. I want my Alakazam. I didn't go through anything with this one. It doesn't right. have the life experience. Exactly. This guy <laughs> defeated Giovanni for me. Exactly. <laughs> so those are the uh those are the best uh accessories out there yeah exactly all right bro that's everything we've got to talk about today on this yeah. true game podcast let's get recording our spoiler cast that's for right Forbidden West. check that out uh tomorrow if you're watching this on yeah, public buddy. Feed. uh and uh thank you everyone for the support everywhere that you do uh thank you for manscape for supporting us over here that's right and uh we'll catch you guys all in there we'll catch one. you in the next all one right. Boom, boom, ba -dum, boom, boom, ba -dum, boom, 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 boom. Did you see Alpha's uh, video? I did. I really feel like you should really go all out and try and make the whole thing. Burp, 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 burp. Right, right, right. Burp, With like backing burp. tracks and stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you should.